The most common cause of vision loss over the age of 60 is uh, uh, diabetes. Di for people with diabetes, is diabetic blindness. All right, high blood sugars uh, kind of um, marinate uh, uh, in your bloodstream all of the blood vessels. And when blood vessels are overly marinated with high blood sugar and all the, th the consequences of what high blood sugar can do, including to your insulin and all the other hormones and metabolites in your body, you know what the blood vessels do? They actually start to shut down. And when the blood vessels shut down, it sparks new blood vessels to try to heal the shutdown areas. And when that happens in the eye, it causes a big problem. And here's the reason why. Your eye, my eye, eyes, I should say plural, are crystal balls. Okay, think about them. They're a little bit smaller than a golf ball um, and they're crystal clear. From the front of the eye, you get light. Wake up in the morning, you see the bright sunlight. That's light entering your eye, going through um, clear liquid. All right, it's like a fish tank with an aquarium. The light goes right in, goes through a hole, the pupil, and then goes right to the back of the eye. And the back of the eye, which is connected to the brain, there is a carpet of nerves. The nerve carpet of nerves is called the retina. You may have heard of the retina, but it's really literally a carpet of nerves that can that is made of uh, neurons, okay, brain cells effectively, um, interlaced, woven, stitched together with a circulation because the power it takes to process the, the, the uh, uh, definition that we want for our vision requires a lot of blood flow, a lot of oxygen. And so the nerves and blood vessels are laced together, okay, like a, like a beautiful old fashioned tablecloth. And when the light signals hit that nerve signal and it's powered by the blood supply, it allows that nerve signal to go straight into our brain. Okay, right to the back of our brain. And basically that's how we actually see. Now, the uh, circulation, when it has to grow to overcome damaged blood vessels from a disease like diabetes, or there's something called macular degeneration, most common cause of uh, blindness, vision loss in people over the age of 60 um, without diabetes. So we're, it, it's when blood vessels are unhealthy and they do the same thing. They uh, react to their unhealthy state by trying to grow more of themselves in order to maintain the blood flow that is actually not adequate. And when the blood vessels grow in the eye, listen, this is a crystal clear ball. When blood vessels have extra blood vessels have to grow to compensate for problems in circulation, that's where there's, there's not a lot of room for growing new blood vessels. And so when those new blood vessels grow, they grow abnormally from diabetes or aging, they leak. Now, I told you there's fluid in the eye, it's crystal clear, but when blood vessels leak, they're leaking cloudy fluid or they're leaking blood. Now, immediately we put blood into this crystal clear aquarium. It's kind of like dumping a, you know ink into your fish tank. What do you think is gonna happen? You're not gonna be able to see through that ink, right? And all of a sudden you are losing vision. And so the most common causes of vision loss in the world are due to abnormal blood vessels, unhealthy blood vessels. And that's why some of the real breakthroughs that have come through the work I and other people have done is to develop anti-angiogenic blood vessel taming one of the most profound clinical studies, biggest clinical studies on food and health was run about 20 years ago, started 20 years ago by the National Eye Institute. So this is sort of the, you know, from the National Institute of Health, like a very credible group of researchers wanted to find out, could we prevent vision loss, right? Very important in an aging population, right? Because, you know, people are working at an older age now, and if you can't see, you can't work. And so your productivity and quality of life go way down. And by the way, the other reason to protect vision has to do with the fact that our eyes allow us to be independent. As we get older, we all want to be independent. We want to do our own thing. And the problem is that if you can't see, you can't be independent. You can't even take your own medicines, right? And if you need if you need them as an older person. So protecting vision was a big priority. So what was discovered is that there are dietary supplements that are made of the same things you can find in foods. Zeaxanthin, lutein, carotenoids, okay, and I'll come to the foods in a second, that when given to people in their 60s and 70s and 80s can dramatically 
reduce the risk of vision loss from macular degeneration. Amazing, right? So here's a dietary supplement that actually works. And there's so much hubris about the the the, the salesmanship of dietary supplements. If you if you ever wanted to find one supplement to trust, it's the one that had the largest clinical trial to preserve your vision. It's called Areds. A R E D S. I don't get paid by any companies doing any of this stuff. I'm just telling you the facts, the data is really convincing. So Areds is recommended for people, frankly, over the age of 50, to take once a day in order to be able to protect their vision. But here's the thing: the stuff in Areds is really, you know, some vitamins. There's lutein. There's zeaxanthin. These are these chemicals that I just mentioned: zeaxanthin and lutein. These are natural chemicals that Mother Nature has laced into foods. What are some of the foods? Watercress, kale, broccoli, red bell peppers,、uh, persimmons, uh, 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 tomatoes. You get these same type of natural bioactives just from the foods that we can eat. So, you know, this whole idea of plant-based foods, which is a generalization, we can be more specific. Of carrots, red bell peppers, kale,、uh, leafy greens like watercress. Those actually contribute to、uh, blood vessel health for your eye to, to lower the risk that you might have blood vessels going out of control. They tame the lion. And the other thing that they actually do is they also, because you're eating them, they go into the bloodstream. They also affect your brain. They also protect and tame circulation to ensure better brain circulation as well, better blood flow to the brain. Now. I'm going to tell you.、Um, not only has that sort of been shown by the dietary supplements that translate to food. There, by the way, the, the other thing that's really cool is that there's some evidence that's starting to develop that the, these supplements for eye disease also protect against dementia as well. Isn't that cool? All right. Now, foods are、uh, really important because we can also protect the blood vessels directly. So there are foods that there's a substance in strawberries called elagic acid. That we know、um, actually can prevent abnormal blood vessels from growing. They're blood vessel tamers, and when you actually have elagic acid、uh, from a strawberry, elagic acid is what makes strawberries tart. Okay,、um, and if you get organic strawberries,、um, uh, they actually have higher levels, and the reason is because the strawberry plant naturally makes elagic acid as a response to being nibbled on by bugs in the environment.、Mm. So this is Mother Nature's wound healing response. So when you grow naturally, the strawberry is going to have more elagic acid. When you eat an organic strawberry grown naturally, you're going to get more of this blood vessel protective response. Recently, it's been shown by a group at University of Cincinnati that eating just one cup of ripe strawberries per day for six weeks. This is published in a research uh, uh, journal. Actually,、uh, in, in middle-aged people who、uh, had mild cognitive deficits. Right, not full-blown end-stage dementia, but mild. You know, like where are my keys? I'm sorry. What is that again? You know, the the thing that you're starting to develop the symptoms. It、right. actually improved memory, improved memory. Strawberries, one cup against the placebo. It reduced the depression and frustration of not being able to remember things. Okay,、um, and it actually improved the score, the cognitive executive functioning score. All because of the elagic acid and another bioactive we think called anthocyanin、uh, as well. So again, you know, we're beginning to tease apart. Like I always tell people,、uh, don't worry about the chemical names. Don't worry about remembering all the details. Like people like me who study food as medicine, and I write about this in my book. Let me do the heavy lifting for you. Let me tell you that what we're beginning to understand is that some specific plant-based foods. Are actually able to protect our blood vessel, protect our vision, and what's good for our eyes are good for our brain. So you get a twofer, a double-barreled approach to overall better quality of life and protected function. Yes, certainly, what you eat matters, especially for your gray matter, you know, and and your eye health and and performance. We'll put we'll put a list to, to the studies also as well at our show notes as we always do at jimquick.com forward slash notes.、Um, I do want to ask you this question from our. Quick Success Community. Again, people could go to quicksuccess.com to be able to join. So, so I, I believe we want to. We always want to be able to give people the option to be able to, to change behavior, right? Because information alone isn't going to change their life.、Um, it's the acting and the application, right? And you know, there's always these choices we can make. And 
There's really only four choices to make change. You either stop something, you start something, or you do less of something, or you do more of something, right? And so let's talk about the question that we had in our community was, if you could identify three, and I know there are much more because you talk about a lot of different foods, which is amazing to have options in the book, and I highly recommend people get their copy. Do you have three favorite foods that you think uh, people should add, and also three foods we should delete or at least reduce? And I know there are going to be more than three, but maybe we could uh, start with the three you would avoid, or at least you know do your best to be able to manage and do less of. And then maybe we could talk about three that would be specifically you know wonderful, not just for eyes, but just in just in general, your favorites. Sure. Listen, this is as you pointed out, this is a big area. Yeah. <laughs> in my two books, Eat to Beat Disease and Eat to Beat Your Diet, I actually talk about more than 200 foods that are all been vetted and actually float to the top as super healthy. And I also identify a number of foods to cut down or cut out. But let's start with three, right? Because people can remember threes. And uh, and I love kind of like your your framework of, of the four choices that you can actually make. So here are three things that I would actually tell you as a food is medicine researcher and, and as a clinician who wants to put rubber on the road to help people uh, get started uh, to do something for themselves. Three things to actually avoid. All right. Cut down or cut out. Let's call it that. Let's put it that way. Um, soda. I would yeah. say um, drinking soda, which is really popular. I grew up drinking soda, you know, like every, most other people. Um, uh, something to cut down and cut out. Lots and lots of added sugar to it. Okay. And even the diet sodas would actually have um, uh, uh, non-nutritive artificial sweeteners. Um, they actually can also damage our circulation and damage our brain function by in, in interfering with our gut health, which we're now beginning to realize is connected to our vision health and our brain health and our overall body health as well. So cut down, cut down or cut out sodas, whether it's diet or regular, number one. Number two, cut down on ultra processed foods. And when I, and I'll give you a concrete example. If anybody who follows sports, you know that the the big events, whether it's the Olympics or whether it's the Super Bowl, uh, or, uh, you know, uh, people get together and what do they do? They bust out the chips. Uh, chips actually are a great example. Uh, you know, those nuclear colored chips are a great example of something that everyone loves. Okay, but they're ultra processed. They take whole foods like wheat and other types of whole grains and they machine them and extrude them and then paint them with colors and then put artificial preservatives and flavorings and seasonings all to, to do something that really might be addictive, you know, because it's hard to eat just one. Um, uh, but the bottom line is that th those ultra processed foods of which I think snack chips are a great example. You, you name your favorite ones, cut down or cut out because those actually harm our overall health defenses. They take down our shields, uh, including for our vision, including for our brain. Um, eat them every now and then if you want, but honestly, they're not good for you. Cut down or cut out. The third one I would actually tell you is processed meats. Processed meats, by the way, by the World Health Organization is classified as a carcinogen. All right, we do know that actually eating processed meats is increasingly increases the risk of colon cancer and esophageal and stomach cancer if you eat them a lot. Now think about the grade school cafeteria or maybe the mom's lunch made with that sliced bologna or whatever you got at the deli. So common, right? Like we probably grew up with that kind of stuff surrounding us. We now know with modern research that those types of ultra processed meats, bologna, salami, pepperoni, all the stuff that are made. I'm not talking about the old world, old school things that are air dried and minimally no preservatives put in them. Those are a different type of product. I'm talking about the stuff you can buy cheap at the deli that are found everywhere. So they're sliced under your pizza, cut down and cut out. That is definitely if you're filled with um, uh, added nitrates or added coloring, added colorings and seasonings. You get a lot of stuff on there. By the way, I had a patient once who was a USDA inspector, um, and he was sp specifically inspecting the uh, factories that were making processed meats. And he and he told me he. He lit up my awareness on this because he said, you know, some of these sausages that are made, he's like, you know, they they they, um, they make the sausage in a casing, they drop them into a vat, a swimming pool filled with artificial chemicals and preservatives and flavorings and just leave them there for, for months. And then what happens is that, you know, the, the casing wrinkles like your fingertips in a bathtub or in a swimming pool. And it's like, and that's basically what you're actually eating. And he's like, and I said, oh, really? That's, that's. 
alarming. And he said, let me tell you something that's more alarming. He's like, I used to wear rubber boots to go into this factory to in, 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 uh, inspect them. And he said, I'd have to change my boots every few months because the liquid on the floor would dissolve the rubber in my boots. And I'm like, all right, that's it. I get it. And so um, those are the three things that cut down or cut out. Soda, regular di- or diet. Uh, ultra processed foods like snacks and chips that are so common and the third thing is processed meats look if you want to have a little bit every now and then it's probably fine but this these are things that definitely cut down okay light up your health including vision including brain health including heart health including muscle function if you're trying to be fit and you're working out and you want better muscles you need to regenerate your muscles you need better blood flow so i like to i'm going to give three grand slamming foods that i think are just winners number one tea all right Tea is the second most commonly drank beverage in the world. I, I have one as well, okay? Uh, and we used to think that green tea was like the best. Probably is. But recent research has shown that green tea, oolong tea, black tea, even super fermented tea like uh, pu'er tea, which is a, a tea from Southwest China, all light up your health. Better for gut health, better for circulation, better for brain health, lowers depression, improves your blood pressure. Amazing uh, uh, but scientifically shown and clinically shown benefits. So tea is one category to add in your life. Um, by the way, don't add sugar to your tea. All right, drink it as straight as you can. And if you're going to add sugar, be if you're going to put sweeteners, you can use honey. You can use sort of more natural sweeteners. Just don't dump chunk lots and lots of of uh, uh, cane sugar uh, into it. Um, uh, and dot and dairy too. I'm giving you some fine points here. Um, uh, that's a so tea, something to include. Second, berries. I'm could, I'm using berries as a category, so you get to choose your own. All right, strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, lingonberries. You pick your huckleberries. Pick your own wherever you are. They are tiny but powerful because the bright colors, the blues, the reds, the oranges. Are all made with are all caused by and and the, and the amazing flavors that that pop out of a ripe berry is actually made with uh, is, is caused by these bioactives but polyphenols the elagic acid the anthocyanins that really really light up your health in all kinds of different ways and by the way for berries here's something practical look I'm a big believer in going to the farmers market and buying the seasonal fresh berries but here's the thing. You can actually get frozen berries, which are less expensive, and you can buy them in bulk and store them in your freezer. And easier to deal with, okay? And they have the same bioactive value. They're picked from the field, flash frozen, and you're good. So, second, berries. Choose your own. They're all good, fresh or frozen. I'd still recommend that you go for those. Now that you have some room, because you removed other things. Third thing that I would actually tell you is brassica, which is a category of vegetable. All right. If you're in Asia. That'd be bok choy, gai lan. These are all the kinds of very common. If you go to your local Asian grocery store, almost all the fresh greens in the produce section are going to be brassica. All right, um, but if you're on the other side, the Mediterranean, which you also know is a super healthy way of eating, you're talking about your broccoli. You're talking about your black kale, the ca- Tuscan kale, the cavallonero. You're talking about your cauliflower.、Um, all kinds of different types of. Greens of different sorts, great source of dietary fiber, great source of bioactives that actually light up your brain health and light up、um, your blood vessel, your vascular health, and light up your immune health while lowering inflammation. And you get to choose from the repertoire of Mediterranean recipes going back generations, or the repertoire of Asian recipes to be able to find ways to take. The salad bar, which I find one of the most boring things that you can actually encounter, and to turn it into something that you would actually look forward to eating to,、uh, look forward to eating because it really, really tastes great. So the three things I would say: tea, berries, and this whole brassica side that you'd find in the produce section of either the Mediterranean market, a grocery store, or the Asian market. And now there's no excuse. Not to be able to find something green that you'd like to eat. That's absolutely fantastic. I know our listeners really appreciate that, and I want to remind our listeners that every day you have a you have a chance because you can make new choices.、Uh, Doctor Lee has given you like three things that you could reduce or eliminate,、uh, cut down or cut out, and then also three delicious options because this can be delicious and nutritious, right? Thanks for watching. If you're interested in more eye health tips and nutritional advice, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon. 
For further details on how to protect your vision, check out Dr. William Lee's latest insights and updates. Stay healthy and see the beauty in the world.